Hello everyone friends. The guest of today's video is Asus VivoBook S15. Let me point out that our computer is a new generation laptop. Processor Intel i5 11th generation and has a built-in Intel Iris Xe graphics card. Before starting the repair, we need to isolate the silicon crystal area of the CPU. Do not get any damage. Customer complaint. Laptop starts. But there is no image on the screen. I examined the motherboard with visual eye contact beforehand. The motherboard is in ideal condition. It was sent to another service before me. But no intervention was made to the motherboard. Since the laptop was in another service, the first thing I noticed was that the front frame of the screen panel was removed. It is possible to see this from this sticky area. Since there was no image on the screen of the other service computer, they probably wanted to try it by changing the first screen. But the interesting thing is that the panel is not completely removed from the case. Because, in new generation models, the screen panel is now stuck to the case with adhesive. Only the front frame has been removed. The screen has not been modified. By the way, the EDP panel cable is solid. I did not encounter any damage. The adapter was connected to the motherboard. By the way, I also connected the USB tester device. Before starting the motherboard, I added a small heatsink on the CPU. Since it is the 11th generation CPU, there will be overheating at first start. I turned on the power supply and the motherboard will auto start. Because the RTC battery is not connected to the motherboard. This is normal situation for Essus. And as you can see the data LED blinked. But there is no image on the screen panel. We diagnosed with the help of a USB tester that the motherboard is actually working normally. So, the laptop is running in the background. In this case, yes, the screen panel is suspicious, but I won't do any intervention on the screen panel right now. Let me also point out that since I have a full HD screen in my hand, I cannot change directly and see the result. But I know that this problem is caused by the motherboard. Before taking measurements on the motherboard, let's see if we have an image via the HDMI port. Our motherboard has auto start and let's wait. And yes, we received images through my HDMI port, this is good. Before shooting this video, I always make measurements on the motherboard to a certain extent. And of course, I'm already sharing this with you. All phases on the motherboard are active. If there was a phase problem, we would not be able to get an image via the HDMI port. If there is no image on the laptop's own display panel, but there is an image via the HDMI port, this is actually a sign that the motherboard is in normal condition. Because in this case, there may be a screen problem or an EDP cable problem. But since I'm not completely sure about this, my focus will be primarily on the motherboard's own circuitry. As I mentioned, I had diagnosed the motherboard before. And the dark part to me is that there is an abnormal voltage drop in the DC to DC interface circuit. This zone is the phase outputs of the standby VRM circuit. This is the 5.0V phase channel. This is the 3.3V phase channel. On the back of the motherboard is the standby VRM integration. In this model, two methods are used in the DC-TODC circuit. One is a standard N-channel MOSFET and the other is switch controls. Standby 3.3V phase main voltage is sent to both MOSFET E and switch controls. Since the switch controls have two outputs, a total of three convert signals are generated. The second input voltage of the switch controls is created with the help of a small control here. This is the phase output coil of the controls and this voltage is sent to this second input channel of the switch controls. Our other DC to DC interface circuit is located here. Only here the 5V phase channel is converted with one N channel MOSFET. There are minor circuit differences between board view and the schematic. Our motherboard revision version is 2.0. In the schematic it is revision 1.0. But more or less the circuits are completely compatible with each other. Now let's measure the first and second channels of the switch controls after the motherboard starts. Then measure the output channels of the controls. 
the motherboard has started. This is our channel 1 and this is channel 2. The voltages are stable. Let's do the next operation and see if our DC to DC interface circuit works properly. The motherboard has started. This is our first channel. Our voltage is normal. This is our second channel. Our voltage is normal. No problem. Let's measure the output of our end channel MOSFET, which is our other convert signal. Yes, there is now an anomaly here. Because the voltages must always be constant even if the names of the convert signals are changed. Let's take our other 5V convert MOSFET. This is our input voltage. Yes, normal. This is our output voltage. We have an abnormal voltage drop here. This is a problem. Yeah. We've diagnosed that our MOSFET aren't turning on properly. In which case we can assume that our MOSFET are faulty. But both MOSFET cannot fail at the same time. With the help of Borod view. Let's see which stream generates the trigger voltage of our MOSFET. This is our MOSFET. 3.3 VA voltage will be renamed 3.3 VS. So it will be converted. This is our other MOSFET. The 5.0 VS US voltage will be renamed 5.0 VS. This signal is converted to 5.0 VS underscore PWR with a jumper. The gate trigger signal name of our MOSFET is called 12 VS. Let's start the motherboard and check the MOSFET in gate trigger voltage. Yes, our gate voltage is too low. 4.8 volts. That's abnormal. In order for this voltage to be generated, more precisely for the gate voltage to be generated, this voltage itself must be converted with the help of the other circuit. Our circuit element here consists of two dual transistors. One is NPN and the other is PNP transistor. And notice that two resistors are connected to the base pins. Our 12 VSUS voltage is actually a voltage from the charge pump circuit. I have a detailed video about the operation of this circuit. You can take advantage of the training set sold through Udemy. The training set is about complex topics and is an advanced level. I talked about the logic of working in a lesson about this circuit. Yes, this circuit needs 5.0 VSUS voltage to work. The dual transistor element here converts the 12 VSUS voltage to 12 VS voltage. But our 12 VSUS voltage here is obtained with the help of the croup diode here. Motherboard started. Let's check our mains voltage. We have 5 voltages. Now let's look at the output voltage. Here we see the voltage we just had on the gate pin. This is abnormal. We have diagnosed that the main voltage of the charge pump circuit is good. This main voltage is actually the output voltage of the standby phase channel. And in this circuit, with the help of diodes and condensers, a pumped higher voltage is obtained. And with this voltage we trigger our MOSFET. There are four diodes in this element. With the help of the multimeter we can measure these diodes in normal diode mode. First let's measure legs 1 and 6. There is now a short circuit dot let's swap the props. Yes, it's a short circuit. Our measurements are finished. Legs 1 and 6, legs 1 and 2 are short circuited. The diodes are broken. We need to replace the circuit element here. Unfortunately I don't have the same component, so I completed the circuit with two different croup diodes that work with the same logic. The image here may look complicated and may not look beautiful. But if we match it with a group of diodes that we choose correctly, the charge pump circuit will work smoothly. Yes, let's measure our output voltage again. The motherboard has started. 
and as you can see we have 13.3 average voltage of 12. Round values are usually written on the schematic. The reason for this is related to the capacitor's attitude value. Now let's measure our MOSFET in the DC to DC interface circuit. Gate trigger voltage is normal. And our convert signal is now good. MOSFET is fully open. I connected our motherboard to the display panel. The motherboard got auto start and let's wait. And unfortunately we still don't have a visual on the display panel. I have already stated that I will not interfere directly with the display panel. Because the problem was primarily with the motherboard. And we repaired the circuitry of the motherboard. But still no image. I have examined the motherboard of the screen in general. I honestly could not see a chip burning or a physical problem. I think yes, our screen panel is also broken. I found another screen that fits the motherboard and connected it. Motherboard yes it started again. Let's wait. And that's the image we got. A new full HD screen has now been ordered for the laptop. This is just a test screen. These were the temperature values of our CPU. Since there is an internally integrated VRM circuit for the 11th generation CPU, CPU temperature values may seem a little higher than other models. We can finish our video now. See you in another video. Thanks. Good day.